Mark will know in the week I've been sharing a little bit and pieces of what I've been feeling in God to share. And and I've I've got a little bit of trepidation in my heart. I keep saying to him, Oh, I really hope that as I I I share what I'm really feeling in God, that people have ears to hear and hearts to receive what I believe God is saying to us as a community of people. And um, so I'll say that because I'm standing up here with a lot of butterflies flying around in my stomach because um, I really want to want to share his heart and I want you to hear his heart and not just words that Colette's put down on an iPad. Okay. Um, so I felt when I, when I um, uh, was given this opportunity to, to be praying and I knew about it a few weeks ago, I, I just felt God give me a picture. And it was a picture of a tall ship with many sails and it was... It was on this water, and um, it had started to, the wind had started to blow, and these little sails, little fragments of sails along this, uh, uh, on the mast were, were beginning to billow and fill with wind. Um, and it was going out on the sea and, and, and sailing. And so I just want to, uh, James, just to put up a little video, just a little snapshot of, so you get an idea of the visual that, that I'm... That's one that floats in the sea today and um, has a group of people that go on it and uh, it's, it's got a full-time crew, but other people get added into that boat um, and they go on working holidays as they learn how to sail and what it means to sail and a bit of teamwork and that kind of thing. And usually on a boat like that, there are 20 to 170 people that are on that um, and operating the vessel. So just a little bit of use, useless information, but just where you get that, that visual in your head of, of just how that picture looked, looked in my mind as this incredible sailing vessel went out upon the water. And um, I just felt like, I, I, I just want to say this, tall, ch tall ships are designed to sail, to sail. They're not designed to sit in a dockyard. They're not designed to stay looking pretty in the harbor. They're not designed to be in warehouses, held up by scaffolding because there's no water for it to sit in. They aren't designed for swimming pools or for big or small lakes. They're designed for wide open seas. They're designed for adventure, mm. adventurous journeys. And for me, if you see a sailing ship in the harbor, there's a couple of things happening. If its sails are rolled up, tied up, they're not billowing with wind, and they're secured, they're in place, it's usually because it's the beginning of a voyage. It's usually because provisions are being loaded on, stocks being loaded in, uh, passengers are coming and climbing onto to the boat, they're coming on board, or well, they're there because they've been on a bit of a journey, but now they're needing to restock, they're needing to add water into the into the tanks, or they're needing to bring more fresh fruit and vegetables on, on board. But they never ever s expected to stay indefinitely or permanently in the harbor. Yeah. yeah. You agree with me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And they never expected to stay in a shipyard or in the docks forever. Mm -hmm. If they go into the shipyard or the docks, it's because they're there for repairs. They're there for the barnacles to be scraped off, the algae to be taken off for a repaint, maybe a fix, there's been a leak, there's a crack, there's something wrong with, with some part of the ship and it's needing to be corrected, things put in place again so that they can go back out onto that wide open ocean and go in the journey or on the journey that God or that it's destined to have. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, when it's in perfect condition, it's sitting in harbor, it's getting ready, the, the sails are starting to get unfurled. Um, the captain is sitting at his desk and he's looking at the, the nautical charts and he's seeing where the plotting of, of the journey is going and the planned course of adventure. Um, there's such excitement and there's thrill about this journey that lies ahead. 
So in my picture in, that I had in my head, as I looked at this billowing, billowing sails and the ship was, was starting to move across the, across the water, for me, it was a picture of readiness. For me, it was a picture full of people. It was a picture full of resources. It was a, there was such a sense in my heart that the ship's equipped, it's ready, it's stocked. It now needs to embark on the journey. And for me, I felt God say, this is my vessel, His Majesty's vessel, King Jesus' vessel, Christ first. Mm. Equipped and resourced and ready to set sail on the sea of life, riding the waves, being full of the wind of the Holy Spirit in its sails, embarking on God adventures. Yeah. I want to reiterate, Christ first, we're not created to sit in harbor. Yes. To stay in the safety of that harbor. We're not created, we're not here to stay on the ship dock. God's created this vessel called Christ first to get out on the high seas. To go on adventures filled with the wind of the Holy Spirit blowing in each and every sail. Going on the journeys and in the direction that he has for us. Fulfilling the assignments and the tasks that he's got ahead for us, yeah. for each one of us. And for, for us, in some of those seasons, it's specific individual things that he's calling us to. But I believe we're in a season where God's saying, my vessel, his majesty's vessel, Christ first. You're ready, you're equipped, you've been stocked, you have everything you need. Now I'm telling you, it's time to set sail. And I felt very clearly the Lord saying that. It's time for us to set sail. I felt him say, be encouraged, for you've been well prepared. You are well stocked. You're ready. Now is the time to set sail. My world's a mess. Many are lost at sea. Many are drowning. Many have been shipwrecked. Many have been caught up in the doldrums with boredom and lack of purpose, drawing them into dangers that threaten to destroy them. I felt him say many are fighting through mighty storms that threaten to overwhelm them. For others, they're laying at anchor in beautiful bays, in unfamiliar lands, having dangerous fun, unaware of the dangers in that place. There are others who've gotten sidetracked, others that are lost at sea, some who've moved off, off course and are sailing without any purpose, vulnerable to ever-present dangers. But you and me, we have a choice in this as well. We can climb on board and we can go on the journey that God's called us to as Christ first. Or we can choose as individuals to stay in the, in the safety of the harbour, stay content in the safe land of just working out my relationship with God. We can sit in the dry docks, distracted, scraping off barnacles, scrubbing decks, repainting, making that vessel pretty and neat, forgetting that it's designed to get out and to go. But others of us can sign up, and we can be signed up, fully invested in this journey. I felt him say to you and me, it's time to set sail. It's time to get out of the harbor. It's time to do what Matthew 8, 28, verse 19 to 20 tells us, to go into all the world, to go into all of Nelson, to go into all of Tasman, and to preach the gospel, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded them. And, by the way, I go with you. Yeah. You're not on your own. I believe God's wanting to remind us, as a church, as a vessel, His Majesty's vessel, Christ first, that we have purpose and reason for our existence. It's not just to meet on a Sunday. There's purpose and there's reason for us being here. He's purposely put Christ first in this, this city called Nelson. He's purposely put you in this vessel called Christ first. He's added you here. And he's calling you and I to go and to reach out to those around about us. Each one of us taking responsibility to reach the people in our spheres of influence. Each of us going into our neighborhoods, knocking on our neighbor's doors, investing in relationship, 
in our workplace, reaching out to those around about us, as we walk into the shopping centers, into the, the different places that we go. I saw Park um, Market on a, Sunday, on a Thursday night through the, 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 the iconic market of Nelson on a Saturday morning. Wherever we're going, whatever we're doing, we realize that we're on a journey. We're yeah. on assignment, that we have a mission, and it's to go and make disciples. It's to teach them what we've been taught, that the Christ, the one who went to the cross and died suffering terribly for us, mm. did that for them. Yeah. And that his great love, in his great love, he wants us to reach them. And so it's time to set sail. We've been placed here for a journey. And it's not a little short journey. There's this long journey ahead. But along that journey, there are these different assignments that he's called you and I to. And he's saying, now's the time. You know, I pictured, in my picture, the people on board are both the crew, that's you and me, but it's also lost people that we've reached along on this journey. And we've Rossed them out of the shark infested water, taking them off the, the island they've been shipwrecked on, mm -hmm. and brought them into the safety of this vessel. Um, and at times we'll go into harbor because they're needing medical attention or they're needing something else, and we are part of their journey mm -hmm. uh, of, of finding Christ. That's good. We've been designed to sail the sea of life, and we've been equipped through discipleship, through the preaching of the word empowered by the Holy Spirit for this journey. All we need to do is go and do what we've been purposed to do. Mm. And so I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, Cole, will you hear my call? And I feel him saying that to you. Do you hear his call? This is not for those super spiritual people. This is not just for the Ephesians for gifting. It is not just for the Christian who's been a Christian for 30 something years. This is for you, every single person in the life of this church. Yeah. Will you respond to the call of going and preaching the gospel, whatever that looks like, in your ordinary, everyday living? Yeah, very good. Will you be a crewman or a crew woman on the deck of Christ first? Will you, will you roll up your sleeves? Will you fill your place as a crewman? Will you take your place on the deck of Christ first? Will you perform your duties? And I, 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 I felt at this point, I wanted it to, to create a space for us to respond to that. And so, I, I, and in many ways, I, I kind of stood up and thought, Lord, what am I doing? How can I preach this word? It's to the converted. But I just want to say right now, if, if you believe that God has purposely placed you on this vessel of Christ first, for an assignment, for a reason, to reach lost people, they're not going to drop from the skies into the empty churches in the hall. It's you and me on mission, drawing them in. And so if you believe that God wants to use you, I'm going to ask you to stand up. And I'm asking you to only stand up if you feel the conviction of the Spirit that, yes, Lord, I want to be used by you. I want to be a crewman on this ship, and I'm going to do everything I can to fulfill the assignment you've given me. If that's you, will you stand? Lord, here we are. Use me, use us. Fill us afresh with a renewed sense of adventure and purpose and a commitment to the task. Empower us to sail the high seas of life here in Nelson. Help us to go where people are who need you. Enable us and empower us to share that agape love of Christ, his mercy, his kindness, and the grace of God with those we encounter. Help us, Lord, to lead them into your unconditional, beautiful, amazing love and acceptance. Help us to find our place, to take our place, to pick up the load that you've called us to, to, to carry and help us to go and to reach the people that you have set aside and set apart to have conversations with Lord. Empower us in this, I pray in Jesus' name. See the willingness, see the availability. Lord, see the open hearts right now. And I ask God, even in this next week, that we will be able to come back and report of the wonderful adventures that we've had on this 
sailing journey with you. I ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Now, you might be looking around this morning and saying, we're not a tall ship. Maybe we're a, a little sailing yacht. Remember I said in the beginning, these ships can take up to 20 people to 170 people. And I shared that with intent because we're not a large church. We're a little church. And you might be sitting here this morning and saying, well, we're a small vessel. What impact can we really make? Or maybe you're just feeling inadequate to the task. Um, and I just wanted to, it, it made me think about all those little sails we saw. Just all those little pieces of fabric. It wasn't one big sail, it was a whole bunch of little ones. Each one was incredibly essential to the forward momentum of that church. Yeah, come on. And yeah. each small sail was a necessary part. Anyone out of place or anyone not fulfilling its purpose would affect the forward momentum of that vessel. Yeah. And I, I read a very sweet, beautiful definition of a sail this week. It was this. It was defined as a strong sheet or fabric or fragment of fabric attached to a boat used to catch the wind and move the boat forward. And that word fragment got my attention. Mm -hmm. Because it made me remember a fragment actually is a small pot. It's a little piece of fabric. It's not this large, big, expansive piece. It's a tiny little piece. It may, you know, maybe that big. And it's um, being created to be part of a number of pieces. But it reminded me, reminded me of a word a few years ago where God gave us that word of he was taking us to a remnant in order to establish. I don't know if you remember that. Mm. But a remnant is like a fabric, a, 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 a fragment. It's little. It's a small remaining group of people. And I wanted to, I just felt God said to me, but Cole, David was small when he faced giant Goliath. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he had me backing him. Come on. Yeah. And David yeah. took Goliath down. And it made me think of Gideon. Mm. And thousands responded to Gideon's call, but eventually they got down to 300. And they faced 30-something thousand. Mm. And they took them all out. And they had victory. <laughs> and they overcame. There was victory and they're overpowered. And I felt God say, imagine what I can do with this remnant. Oh, imagine yeah. what he can do with this remnant, guys. Yeah. Every single one of these empty chairs can be filled. If we yeah. open up our sails and yeah. allow the wind of the yeah. Spirit to fill yeah. each so one. Yeah. And, and so for me, a sail is small compared to the whole ship, but it's absolutely essential. Without the sails, a, ship, a sailing ship can't move forward. All it needs is a whole bunch of sails get unfurled and the wind starts to blow and every sail fills and suddenly that vessel, majestic and big, is off. Mm. Now, I believe there's a fresh wind of God's Spirit blowing. It's already blowing. It's already available. It's ready to fill the sails. Those small pieces of fabric, that remnant people. There's a fresh wind of the Spirit blowing. It's not the old, same old, same old. It's not a stale wind. It's not a, 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 um, the same as days gone by. It's a new, fresh, Holy Spirit moon. Yeah. And so for me, the picture changed slightly. This vessel with all these little sails and the wind started to blow and the, the vessel started going. And suddenly I saw each sail as each one of you. Each one of us are sails. Each one of us are sails on His Majesty's vessel, and He's caused that caused those sails to unravel. Get ready! Yeah, comes the wind of the Spirit, and suddenly this vessel begins to to move. These amazing little pieces of fabric begin to move the whole thing. Yeah. And I, I just felt like God saying, "Know your place, take your place, and let me fill you." Know your place, take your place, and let me fill you. Let me fill you with the freshness of my wind. He's asking us to be available. He's asking us, are we willing to be filled by him? Are we willing to serve him in any way he calls us? For me, that speaks of intentionality, and it also speaks of ownership. 
for each one of us. And so I'm asking myself the question as much as I'm asking you this morning. Are you positioned, ready to be filled with the fresh wind of His Spirit? Are you ready and willing to be used by God in this fresh new season ahead in unusual and unpredictable and unexpected ways? Because it's going to look different to how you're thinking. It's going to look different to what you've experienced in the past. It's good. We need every cell raised, every gift available, everyone operating. Acts 2 verse 2 speaks of a sound of a violent wind blowing and filling a house. And I heard the blowing of a strong, powerful wind. And this wind was a sudden filling wind. It won't blow as it's blown before. But it's a wind that is going to help us move from what is behind and move forward into the new. It's a wind that requires us letting go and letting God have his unique and wonderful way. God wants to take us on an, on an exciting new adventure with the wind of his spirit. It's a wind that's going to empower and enable us with passion to do what he's called us to do. And I, I just, it reminded me again that Acts scripture where it talks about in the last days, the, 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 the um, wind would come and blow and the wind would, I'm going to forget the scriptures. I apologize to those listening. Completely forgotten the scripture now. But I believe that the wind wants, the Holy Spirit wants to be poured out in this latter day. Mm-hmm. And he wants to fill young and old, yeah. rich and poor, yeah. no matter what culture, no matter what color, no matter what language we speak. He wants to unite us by the power of his Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. He wants to activate us by the power of his Holy Spirit. And he wants to release us by yeah. the power of his Holy Spirit individually, intentionally, purposefully to touch and impact Good. this city, this Come region, on. the region beyond, our, our Jerusalem, our Judea, our Samaria, and the ends of the earth, yeah. as Acts talks about as well, that he's wanting us to be part of that. And all we need to do is unfurl and allow the wind to fill us, and then we go where he leads us. We, and it's Good. going to be different. Yeah. We've got to be prepared to go into places. Should a Christian go to that? Absolutely. We've got to be prepared to do whatever it takes to reach people who are on a journey of destruction. Good call. It's good. And so I ask you the question, and I ask myself, am I willing and available to serve God how He wants me to, where He wants me to, when He wants me to, wherever He leads me? Are you? Are you ready? Are you positioned? Have you unfurled? Have you said, here I am, Lord, use me? I want to use that moment to say, if that's where you're at, would you mind standing? Mm. And I'd like to pray for us yeah. for an activation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Holy Spirit, see each one of these cells as they've unfilled themselves, as they've positioned themselves, as they've ready themselves for the fresh wind of your Holy Spirit to come. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would blow, that you would fill them afresh, you would fill them anew, that you would release the gifts they need for this time, that you would release the power and the authority and the anointing for the task and the assignments that you have set aside for each one of them by name to do and fulfill. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to move in power. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to release supernatural power, to release supernatural signs and wonders through each one of their hands. I'm asking you, Lord, when they lay hands on the sick, the sick recover. I'm asking you, Lord, that when they require a certain spiritual gift to operate in a certain moment, Lord, you give them the the courage and the boldness to, to step up believing fully that you are powering them, that you are blowing them, that you are leading them along this journey. And Father, I pray that they will lead many to Christ. I pray that many will bow their knee and and accept you as Lord and Savior because of what you've done through each one of them as they build relationship, as they have conversations led by your Spirit. Holy Spirit, blow. Holy Spirit, fill each one of us. Holy Spirit, release us to be who you've called us to be, to do what you've called us to do, and to make a difference in this city and in the region and the regions beyond, in this island, in this nation, in the nations of the world. I ask for this now. 
Activate us, release us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So the journey ahead is thrilling. It's exciting. It's one full of fun. But you know, the sailing vessel is, is, is not just a, a cruise a cruise and a fun, fun time. It's also a working ship. It's a working vessel. And so by all means, we can enjoy it the breeze from the sea, and we can enjoy the smell of the sea, and we can even go for a paddle, and we can maybe go for a swim, and we can throw out our fishing rod, and we can reel in the fish that God allows us to catch, by all means, we've got to have fun, we've got to enjoy it, we, you know, if we're all in, let's have a party while we're going for it as well, but the reality is, this is also a working ship, it needs every hand on deck in order for everything to be achieved. It means all of us doing our parts, playing our parts, because we'll cover more ground and have more impact if we do that. So for me, sailing can only happen on a vessel like that if there's a team. And teamwork makes the dream work, right? Okay, so it's working with one heart, it's working with one vision, it's working with one hope, and it's working together. And that means ownership. I don't know about you guys, but this is my church. This is my family. This is my home. And I hope that you all feel the same. Mm. Come on. Otherwise, yeah. Mark, you and I need to go and get other jobs. Yeah. And we need to we need to move on. Someone else needs to take the helm. Maybe one of you. Or maybe we need to shut the doors. We actually need to take ownership. Every single one of us needs to own this. Is this your family? Is this your people? Is this your tribe? If it is, we need all hands on deck. On. We need each one of you serving in whatever way possible. Uh, we need to step out of our comfort zones. We need to be prepared to serve in areas that we aren't necessarily good at. God, in this season, we can't be specialists. In this season, we need to be generalists. Yeah. Is that a word? We need to be fully committed, all in, available to function in whatever the needs are. Yeah. There are few of us. We can't be specialists. We have to be able to do whatever role, whatever function is needed That's at right. any particular time. You know, on a sail ship like that, you learn to tie knots. There's a particular way so that the rope can move. You hoist the sails, you secure the ropes, you clean the decks, you wash out the washrooms. There's some terrible jobs sometimes. You go fishing, you cook the food, you're on the lookout, you're fixing minor issues along the way, you do small repairs. They're general practitioners. They're not specialists. Doesn't mean there won't be a moment where we have to specialize with us, the special gifts that God has given us, absolutely operating in the spiritual gifts we carry. But there are times where we have to say, there's a need, there's a hole, I'm going to step in there and I'm going to fit in there and do that thing, carry the load. It's being flexible, having a servant's heart, being willing to change. It's learning about the wind. It's learning how to interpret the wind, how to become skillf skillful with the wind. And that's all of us, mm, yeah. not just some of us. Yeah. And, so, and I'm not saying that with any intent, in, in, in any way, other than to say this. This, us, we are a team. Every single one of us, together, everyone achieves more. Yeah. Yeah. Together, we have a greater impact and an inf an influence. Together, we carry the load. Together, we spread the load yeah. to ensure that not one person burns out. Mm. So, as a smaller vessel, we need you and the spiritual gifts you have, the natural abilities you have, but we also need you to volunteer to fill the holes of need. And let me tell you, people, there are holes of need, mm. holes of need in this local church. We have a couple sitting there week after week after week on the back desk doing AV and sound. We have a few doing worship, and you might not be able to play an instrument, but you might be able to hold a couple of notes and can sing. Or you might be able to learn how to do AV and sound so that a couple doesn't have to do it every week. There are areas of great need. There are gardens that need to be sorted, cleaning of the building, upkeep of the building, or the vessel, repairs to this vessel, etc., etc., etc. And team needs to be flexible and willing to step into whatever area of need there is so that we can 
be wonderfully, wonderfully prepared for whatever God is going to do in and through this local church. For me, teamwork truly makes the dream work. And we need every hand on deck in this season. We need you. We need you doing whatever the need is. So, let me change tact a little bit. Any sailing journey needs good weather. But the reality is, when vessels are out there, sometimes bad weather happens. You know, stuff happens. And you know what? It happens to Christians. It happens to you and I. You know, I've heard that saying, all sunshine and no rain makes for a desert. And all rain and all rain and no sunshine makes for a bog, a boggy swamp. Something like that. English professor over there can maybe correct it. But it's all part of that sailing adventure, having different types of weather. You need wind to sail, um, but it's much better to sail when the sun's shining and the sea's calm like a mirror. Oh, it's a glorious day as the dolphins swim ahead of you or the whales reach on that side of you. You see the kingfish in the water that you can catch and it's just a glorious, beautiful day, wonderful for sailing. But sometimes storms arise. And I don't know if you remember Mark 4, verse 35 to 41. It's talking about Jesus had just finished ministry. And he said, okay, come guys, we're going to climb on board and we're going to go over to the other side. And what happens in the middle of that journey? A storm arises, a terrible storm. Jesus is sleeping on the deck, completely at peace. He's already said, come, we're going to the other side. And the disciples are overcome with fear. They, they, they are um, fishermen, but most of them can't swim. And they're afraid of the storm. They've forgotten what Jesus said. Come, we're going to the other side. They wake him up. Jesus, don't you care what's happening to us? We're about to go down. Climb, climb, climb. And who knows? Jonah's whale might be there to swallow us up. And they're in absolute panic and fear. And what does Jesus do? He rises up. He speaks to the wind and the waves. It calms down in that moment. And he turns to his disciples and he says, Oh, you with little faith. Storms come. And let me tell you, even when a storm comes, Jesus keeps his word. That's right. I want to encourage you with that. No matter what storm you might be facing on this journey, or face it may come still on this journey, Jesus is with you on the boat. And Jesus will calm that storm. When you go sailing with Jesus, it doesn't mean there's not going to be a storm, but we guarantee he's with us and we guarantee he'll bring us through. We might look different. We might be thinking different after that storm. There may have been adjustments that are made in us. Our faith will certainly grow. We'll suddenly see stuff in there that we didn't realize was there and needs to be dealt with. But Jesus doesn't abandon us. He right. brings us through right. the storm. He brings us to the other other side, just as he intended. Yeah. God might have said some things to you on the journey of life you've been in. And that maybe hasn't come to pass yet. Or it's been, you know, you, 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 you haven't seen the fullness of it. Don't doubt in the storm what God told you in the fair weather. Mm. That's right. It will come to pass because he's not a man that he lies. He takes his time sometimes because of the work he's doing within us. No matter what storm, he'll bring us through. You know, Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit are not standing in heaven looking down going, Oh dear God, what are we going to do now? Wringing their hands because there's a storm that we're facing. No, no, no. They know what was coming. Yes. They know what the intent of the enemy is in that moment. But they're his intent as the Godhead. God, God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit is that they will be right there with us. They will bring us through peacefully, purposefully, and victoriously. So when storms come, we've just got to let go, hold on to Jesus with all we're worth, and watch his deliverance come through for us. And so I want to pray for any person in this place right now in Jesus, who's facing a storm, who's going through something that is filling them with fear and anxiety and worry. And I ask that you would come and you would stand in the boat with them right now and you would say, peace, be still. And that the winds and the waves would cease their destruction. And I ask God that whatever the enemies intended in that moment, you would say, stop. You would 
um, uh, prevent his workings. I ask you to protect every person in their storm right now. I ask, Father, for your deliverance. I pray, Father, that your will be done. I pray that you bring peace and calmness to their hearts and their minds. And I pray that you fill them with faith. You fill them with courage. You fill them with hope. You fill them with belief. And you, and you empower them, Lord, to get through the storm they face. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Storms also bring shipwrecks. And shipwrecks aren't fun. But Paul um, was one that I suddenly thought about in 2 Corinthians 11.25. Not only did he say, was I beaten three times with rods and I was pelted with stones. But he says, three times I was shipwrecked. Three times. And I spent a day and a night in the open sea. In Acts 27 and 28, we're also told of a number of Paul's sailing journeys. Storms arising, bringing about shipwrecks. So sailing can be dangerous, as much as it can be exciting and fun. Journeys can be perilous. Shipwrecks can happen, and they do happen. And Christians are not immune to them. And shipwrecks arise due to winds and waves of adversity, through the rocks of crisis, through false navigational readings, there is a result of sandbanks, of suffering. And it made me think of that story again in Acts 27, where, where the, 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 uh, Paul's out on a boat with um, sailors, and they um, have come across a sandbank. And when they, whenever there's a sandbank, there's, there's a number of things happening. There's some deep water, there's some shallow waters, and waves are coming from all directions, and it's just, it's a terrible thing. And most Ships that get caught there, shipwreck. And the guys who try and get off on, on, on lifeboats end up where lifeboats are capsizing or getting broken up and people are drowning. It's a very, very awful place to get caught um, in at, 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 for, a, for a sailor. Now in Acts 27, the sailors feared running onto the sandbanks of Syrtis. I don't know how you say it. Um, but it was a place with this deep and shallow water Inciting, and there was all this violent stuff happening in that place. And most, if caught there, as I've mentioned already, would end up dying or be destroyed in some way because of the violence of that. And if you stayed on ship because you, you didn't want to get um, out on the, on the, the lifeboats, um, you ended up dying of starvation and, and, and dehydration anyway. So it was, a, it was the most feared place for sailors. Um, so shipwrecks you and I can face. Could be a loss of our home. Could be the loss of jobs. Could be the loss of a marriage or relational breakup. Shipwreck in our life has been our son's, older son's marriage ending up on the rocks. Um, none of us are immune. None of us are immune. That can be cancer, it could be COVID-19, it could be other health issues. They're dreams and hopes that have just sunk out of sight beneath the waves. Because shipwrecks have different names for each one of us. Bad stuff happens to Christians. Shipwreck happens. When it does, what do we do? And for me, we have to gain perspective. We have to regain perspective. Because the ship may have gone down, but you and I are still here. That person that we love so much, our son, mm. there's a shipwreck that's happened, mm. but he's still here. Mm. With God is with us. God is faithful. God can be counted upon. Eventually, that grief, that loss, that guilt, that disappointment, that hopelessness, that anger, that pain, whatever it might be, diminishes, and we get through the dark night of the soul. We get over that sandbank. We get we, we that shipwreck doesn't have to. Sh literally cause our demise, yeah. spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. Yeah. There are possibilities and potentialities in the new season that can be realized again. You may have felt overwhelmed. It may have been terrifying. It may have been a life-altering shipwreck. But a new day begins to dawn again, bringing with it God's second chances and amazing fresh new things. Because Jesus is always in the shipwreck with us, and he's on the other side of the shipwreck with us. He works the devastation into something incredible that brings glory and honor to him. He promises in Romans 8, 28, to work all things out for the good, for those of us who love him and are called with purpose. 
Now, I'm not minimizing, and nor is Jesus minimizing what we faced or are still to face, what we've been through or what we're still to be through. Yeah. You know, he's, he's reminding us again, as he did in this storm. Yeah. I'm with you. I don't abandon you. And I will work this into the perfect tapestry of the perfection of my will and my purpose for your life. And I'm going to bring great growth and depth of character and faith and spiritual maturity. And I'm going to change you from one degree of glory to the next. And I'm going to work it out for your good. So we need to change our perspective when we, when we are going through a shipwreck. It's not a waste of time. It's not God being unfaithful. And it's certainly not the end. Because you and I will sail the high seas again. Yeah. Because that's what God's created us to do. And so Lord, I want to pray for every single person in this room mm. who has either faced a shipwreck, shipwreck, has been shipwrecked, or has a loved one who is going through a shipwreck moment. And I'm asking that in your love, your mercy, and your grace, that you reach in and you rescue us. I'm asking you to deliver us from all evil. I'm asking you to turn around what the, evil, the devil has meant for harm and to turn it for good. I'm asking you to weave it through the power, into a powerful testimony that points many others to Christ, to the one who loves. And I'm asking where the pain overwhelms and keeps us locked in hurts or disappointment, pain and trauma, Lord, that you will reach in and you will do open heart surgery and you will do open brain surgery and you will bring complete healing and wholeness to each one of us again, to each one of our loved ones. Lord, I pray that the shipwrecks do not shipwreck our faith, but I pray rather fires up our faith that we bring glory and honor to the King. Yes. May our shipwreck stories not bring horror, but bring hope to the many around us. I ask in Jesus' name. Yes, and finally, sometimes our sailing journeys, we can get caught up and stuck in the doldrums. I don't know if you know what the doldrums are, but they're the moment in that sea where the wind ceases and the, the sea is like glass and it's silent. And initially, it's quite lovely. But in the days of old, when those ships didn't have engines and motors, all they had were the sails, it was the worst nightmare for a sailor to be stuck in the doldrums. Because if you got stuck in the doldrums, you were in a very helpless place. The doldrums could last a few days, a few weeks. It could last for a very long time. And the ship would just be sitting on the water, going nowhere. And often what would happen in that place is the food would run out, then the water would run out, and then the sailors would get delirious, and then they would, they would, they would jump overboard, and they couldn't swim, they would die. Or they, they would just lose heart, or they would begin to mumble and grumble about the captain and what he should be doing, and what he, this is his fault, and then mutiny would arise on board the boat. Um, and so a variety of things can happen in the doldrums. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible place to be. Maybe you're stuck in the doldrums right now. And how would you know if you are? Well, it's like being caught in no man's land. It's in that place of inactivity. It's boredom. It's stagnation. It can even look like depression. The doldrums can cause you to become negative and critical about anything and everything the leadership, or anything else. It's, it's a terrible, terrible place. And you might want to jump ship or jump overboard and leave the ship. Or perhaps right now you know things aren't right with you. You're just going through the motions. You're keeping yourself distracted with busyness. And you, you, you know, hoping that this feeling will just go away when it won't. Perhaps you've just given up, lost heart, lost hope. And you're caught up in that downward spiral of negativity and depression. And everything looks hopeless. And it just is never going to get better. Or perhaps you're just in that case of, I'm just going to fake it till I make it. You're caught up in a funk. You're just going through the motions. It, it all looks right. And you're saying all the right things. But it isn't. Perhaps you're even considering mutiny against God. As you feel disenfranchised, disappointed, disillusioned. Where are you, God? Where's your deliverance? I've cried out for. The doldrums can be a very dangerous place to be. Often the sailors of old caught in doldrums were lost forever. Their, fly, their supplies finished long before they could get to a, to a place to replenish them. 
and many, many died a terrible death. The spiritual doldrums is a terrible place, and it comes from a place of operating from lack or empty. You've just got no more resources left. You're trying to work it all out in your, by yourself, and you're trying to live it out in your own energy and effort, and it begins to create a distance between you and God, you and Jesus, and you stop praying, because, hang, he doesn't answer my prayers anyway, and you stop reading the word, because, man, it hasn't helped me, and your thoughts become negative, depressive, and down, down, down you go, and you get delirious, and you jump off the ship. This morning, perhaps you've been caught in a storm, or you've been shipwrecked, or you're in the doldrums. But Jesus is with you in it all. That's right. And so Lord, I want to pray for anyone who's in the place of the doldrums. Anyone who's in that place where it's just creating negativity, creating criticism, creating doubt. Uh, they're feeling abandoned. They're feeling like you're not there. Uh, it's it's been a place of emptiness and lack. There's no more resources in themselves. They're feeling distant from you, Lord. They've stopped praying. They've stopped reading the Word of God. They, they're just in that place of heaviness and depression. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that by your Spirit, you would take off that spirit of, of depression, that spirit of oppression, that, that spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus, and that you would replace it with a garment of praise and a garment of joy, that you would restore the joy of salvation in people, Lord. Yes. That you would um, that you would make the word alive to them. That, Lord, that they would begin to talk with you again. You would reestablish that connection, Lord. That you would cause such a hunger and a thirst for you and for your word. That, Lord, as they begin to read your word again, it would be like a life-giving manner to their soul. Yes. That, Lord, as they begin to pray, they see your breakthrough's coming. I'm asking you, Lord, to take people out of the doldrums, yeah. and I'm asking you, Lord, to blow Come your on, wind Jesus. freshness again, yes. that, Lord, you will inspire, you will motivate, you will refresh with joy, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, that your grace would be sufficient in their weakness. Lord, that they will not let go of you. They will not turn their back on you. I'm asking you, Lord, they will not go down. I'm asking you, Lord, to raise them up, that they might be all that you've called them to be. Yeah. That they might do all that you've called them to do. I ask this now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so we've spoken a lot about saving. This is his majesty's mm. vessel, Christ first. Each one of you are crewmen on this ship. Each one of you are sails at another time on the ship. The Holy Spirit is blowing a fresh wind. The Holy Spirit has assignments and he has a, a journey ahead of us. The Holy Spirit has uh, a wanting each one of us to take responsibility, to find our place, to take our place. Every hand on deck, everyone willing to fill whatever hole of need there is. So he can take us on an incredible journey that we can see these empty chairs filled with many who come into salvation knowledge of Jesus Christ because you chose to say, Yara I am, Lord, use me. And so, Lord, thank you for this moment. I pray, God, you use each one of us to bring the freedom of Christ to others that they might be set free. Amen. I'm asking you, Lord, to help us to stand firm. I'm asking you, Lord, to help us not to give up on this journey. I'm asking you, Lord, to protect us from storms and from shipwrecks and from the doldrums. I'm asking you, Lord, to take us into this new season of power and authority and anointing and adventure and of many coming to Christ, the prodigals returning. I'm asking you, Lord, to take us into the new opportunities and potentialities that you have for us. I'm asking you, Lord, to keep us free and to help us draw others into the freedom of Christ. Yes. I'm asking you, Lord, to release your fresh vision to each one of us. I'm asking you, Lord, to keep empowering us for this journey. In Jesus' name, amen.